This video is brought to you by my awesome sponsors. Make sure to check out the affiliate links in the description below. Thanks again for all the support. As we're in the last few days of 2022 and very quickly approaching 2023, Need for Speed Unbound has been released for the, to the public for the past month or thereabouts. And of course, I do feel like this is a very well-polished game, uh, surprisingly so. But here are six things that I would change in Need for Speed Unbound for the new year of 2023. Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and of course welcome to more Need for Speed Unbound content. If you're new to the channel make sure to like, comment, and please 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 subscribe. We've had a lot of new uh, viewers come to the channel in the past month or thereabouts and not a lot of you are subscribed. So if you enjoy Need for Speed Unbound content and racing content as a whole please please stay tuned and subscribe to the channel as we've got a lot more of this coming on up. So point number one I would change for 2023, if it is somehow possible, is to increase the lobby size and the server size in Lakeshore Online. A cap of four people in a lobby and 16 in a server in 2023 is in all honesty laughable. The developers of uh, this game, you know, Criterion, a lot of them were pulled to work on Battlefield 2042. I know this is going to be comparing apples to oranges, but on next gen, quote unquote next gen, now current gen, new gen console, if you will, on PC, Xbox Series X and Xbox Series S and PS5 has a full server size of 128 people. Now, I am not expecting that to be the exact same here, but the fact that Criterion have pushed that they are only developing four next-gen consoles and then half the size of lobbies and half the size of the servers from Heat, which was last-gen, I am so confused of why that was a design choice that was met with you know, yeah, sure, that sounds great. And the issue with doing that is we only have two people in this m online match. There are so many people who are picky and choosy about what they want to play that, you know, they'll only wait for the S plus kind of classes. And we only get a race with two people because there's only 16 people on the server that are doing their own things. I just, I don't, I don't get it. I don't. Second thing that I would change is this little guy up here, and that is matchmaking as a whole. You can only invite everyone in the server to play with you. And I think that is incredibly stupid because if you're even in the garage, the thing that I don't get is if you're in the garage, you're still going to get that notification in the top right corner. And you're trying to work on your car, you're trying to do whatever, and you've got this stupid thing in the corner, and you can't remove it. It's like, why is there that... Why is that in the garage to begin with? So yeah, it is beyond me why that stupid little thing in the top right corner is appearing all the time. And there's no... The thing that I don't get is that you can't get rid of it. So if you cancel it, or say that you decline, it still sticks around. And it's just such a weird design choice. And especially, it covers up half your options in the garage. And I don't... Like, why? You don't need to accept races while you're in the garage. Why is this even in the garage? It's just so confusing. But yeah, in general, it's, it's just... The whole idea of uh, inviting the entire server to a lobby to like race a couple of races is so odd. There's no matchmaking. There's no polished way of getting everybody together. And I am baffled. Point number three for things I would change for 2023 is an expanded car list. Now, to be honest, the car list in Unbound is pretty decent. I'm not going to lie. The thing that I have an issue with is that Criterion had just lifted the car list from Heat and just added like two or three cars. And then they said, yep, that's good enough. 
and the Carlos didn't heat to be honest was all right but there are a lot of like big empty holes that I had want to fill like for example you know the addition of Bugatti is great so being able to continue with that thread of yeah you've got the Chiron but would it be cool if you could have the Veyron Super Sport or how about the Bugatti Devo you know those would be great because those are cars that are well some of the cars are fairly recent but a lot of the cars that were introduced have been out for the better part of a decade so I, I don't understand why we can't have you know a larger variety of recent cars and don't even get me started with the lack of Toyota that's that's just I understand that they at this point have no control over it but they really need to find new cars to add to this game because it just feels like a heat 2.0 and if they want to show off that this is a new game that isn't heat, then make it feel different as far as the car list goes. Make it feel like there are a lot more tuners or a lot, you know, more unique exotics. Like, I don't know, the McLaren Speedtail or 720S. Point number four that I'd want to change in Unbound is the drifting model. Uh, as many other people have pointed out, it is unsatisfying. It is clunky. Like, don't even bother hitting the handbrake because that'll just, like, spin you out. Or, or The understeer of this game. You try to drift and you go straight half the time. It is so odd. And it's, it's not intuitive in the least. And somebody's actually done a little bit of research and figured out that the best drifting car in this game is the Ford F-150 wrapper. Yes, you heard that correctly. A freaking pickup truck. What the actual hell? That is so stupid. Because you've got like some actual JDM legends that are known for their drifting in this game, and they feel like shit. Like, really, guys? This is so stupid. Uh, furthermore, point number five, in kind of uh, reference to the drifting model, there needs to be new game modes like drifting when you guys fixed it not before you fixed drifting but after you fixed drifting because having again a very unsatisfying drifting mechanic in the game followed up by drifting events that are specific to utilizing this horrible mechanic i don't know i just that just seems like a time for not a really good time but I digress, the community has been begging for drag and drifting events since prior to Heat, and I think even prior to Payback. So why don't you add it? I don't know. I imagine that the difference was that you're using takeover events, which are drifting around these tiny little construction areas, trying to hit as many boxes as possible, which, to be honest, I mean, that is... That's what I mean about the drifting, by the way. So back to my point. I mean, you've got take takeover events, which I imagine is the closest thing to a drifting event, which is all right. But again, the drifting mechanic just doesn't work that well. Even if you have a car with drift tires, it is undrivable in the rest of the map on a less of you're doing takeovers. So please fix the drifting model. Please add drifting events after you fix it. And if you have drag tires in the game, why don't you have drag events? It's... I don't know. I do not understand a lot of the decisions being made in this game. And last but not least, the final point, point number six of something that I would change for 2023, is at least a partial promise or something from EA saying that they are going to provide some long-term support for this game. I understand a lot of the EA's business models are, you know, annual releases of games. But the fact that they have a huge money-making franchise, that they openly state that they can't do an annual game anymore, and then they 
cut off support after six months is really... <sighs> I still don't understand what's going on at EA, and I will never understand. So the thought process is to be able to combat this just a little bit is they've introduced challenges which you have to perform certain amounts of drifts or boosting or something to be able to unlock various cars in the online environment. I kind of like that. I actually really do. So furthermore, kind of taking a, a page from Forza Horizon's playbook of being able to have weekly or daily challenges where it is if you do this type of, you know, if in the next 24 hours or 48 or during this week or something, if you perform, you know, 10 miles of drifts or something, that you'll be able to unlock this special car with a special livery or be able to unlock new uh, parts or even new cars that haven't yet been added to the game. Because that kind of stuff, I don't think really takes that much to program. It's you take things that are already being counted in the game and you just apply it to an un a different unlockable feature. And every week you just, you know, throw in a new car or something. So, I mean, it's... I'm not asking for much here. Just like support that goes on past six months. And we're not asking for an expanded map. We're not asking for something crazy like that, where it's adding a couple of new cars with different ways to unlock them seems pretty easy. Like, uh, kind of like a gimme. It, it's, <laughs> it should just be really easy to do, but I digress. So of all the things that I've asked for, this is what EA and Need for Speed have actually promised for 2023 so they make mention here that an upcoming series of post-launch updates and experience packs i'm not familiar what of an experience pack is but series of post-launch updates sounds good to me as well as free access to new modes social features and progression for lakeshore online New modes. I'm not going to say it's drift events or drag events, but if they give us like a new odd kind of uh, like a time trial or something like that, I'm going to be severely disappointed. It says the first update will focus on expanding social play features. Future updates will bring new modes and features, cars, this one's the weird one. Customization content. So probably new wheels and body kits and whatnot. And then, of course, and more. Of course, stay tuned for future details and need for speed on bound content. Fine. But first update will focus on expanding social play features. I Again, I'm not going to say that that's expanding the lobby size because I think, unfortunately, that's kind of set in stone at this point. If you've made an online environment that is functional only for four people in a lobby and 16 people in a server and it's a downgrade from heat and it's already out there, I don't really think that there's a potential way of being able to really change that, unfortunately. So, oh well. But yeah, like I was saying, future updates will bring new modes and features, cars, customization content, and more. So new modes, again, probably not drift or drag, but I'm hoping. Uh, features, maybe matchmaking or something better for that. Cars, that's a good one. Thank you. Bringing new cars, that's great. And like I said, customization content and more. Yeah, having new body kits and new rims and stuff like that is always appreciated. So, cars. Cars in a car game. New cars. I like the sound of that. I really do. Thank you, guys. That's, that's going to be nice because Heat's car content was you added the Aston Martin DB11 and a McLaren F1. The McLaren F1's my favorite car, so I didn't... I didn't have any issues with it, but it sounded like that a lot of the content that was going to be DLC for Heat 
was just cut and cut and cut and cut and cut until you guys are like, uh, we got to get something out here. Have some two cars. Oh, well. So that was my six things that I would change for Need for Speed Unbound in 2023. If you agree, if you disagree, make sure to like, comment, and tell me about your opinions of things that you would personally change, things that you would add, things that you don't quite like and would like changed. Of course, I always like to hear you guys' thoughts and opinions, so please, please leave them down in the comment section below. I always will be replying to as many as them as, as I can, because yeah, I want to I wanna get your thoughts on this. So thanks so much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this content, again, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Please, please, please subscribe. That'd be amazing. Uh, as we have a lot more Need for Speed Unbound content coming, I'll probably be posting some uh, multiplayer uh, gameplays and the online, well, Lakeshore online. And hopefully I can actually start streaming pretty soon. I, I hope that that's not an empty promise that I actually do start streaming because that's been a goal for many years at this point. So again, stay tuned for all of that. And of course, thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys have a great day today. Take care. Bye.